Thursday, October 20th, 2016, and we'll wait for the city engineer. Go ahead. <laughs> the time is 6.30 p.m. The regular meeting of the Greensburg Redevelopment Commission is called to order. At this time, if everybody would please silence their electronic devices, we'd all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we do our vote, I'll go short, our usual secretary. Can I interest me to a few gentlemen? <laughs> uh, thank you, Adam. Would you do a roll call <laughs> Dave White. Present. Adam Winslow here. Ken Dorn. I'm here. Vitamin McKenzie is absent. Shannon McClode is absent. <coughs> Thank you. Approval of minutes of the August the September meeting. Excuse me, that's a typo. Are there any corrections to the minutes that were distributed? No. I would make a motion that we accept them as they stand. Thank you, Ken. Second. Thank you, Adam. Those in favor? Motion passes 3 to 0. Under new business, the first item is object of update of project status for phase two. Mr. May, do you have anything to report to us? Um, <clears throat> yes, I can report that the group has been together, I think, twice to this point and has generated a partial list of ideas that generally reflects the, the previous list and adds uh, a couple of potential items to that list. You're, may I interrupt, you're commenting on item two um, about the project list. I was going to yes. comment on that. How about the first item about project status for oh, phase two? I'm sorry. Um, phase two of Veterans Way. If we could wait just a bit, perhaps. Patrick Wooden, our designer, is here. here. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we'll go ahead with that. There sorry. Is. Okay. Um, I was going to let Patrick kind of do the update this time since he's here. Well, that would be great if Patrick could keep going forward, please. Sorry about that. Good evening. Um, over the last couple of months, we've been actively working on the project development. Um, the most uh, pressing matters that we've been working on has been the completion of the draft uh, categorical exclusion document, the environmental investigation report. Uh, we were able to submit uh, the draft CE uh, at the beginning of September. Uh, NDOT did have review comments on one of the reports within the CE document, the EJ report, uh, the environmental justice report, uh, which was one of the uh, items within. Uh, we have addressed the comments uh, within that EJ report. We have resubmitted that along with a resubmission of the CE document on October 7th. And that document is currently in review uh, by the NDOT Office of Environmental Services staff. Uh, we're anticipating getting uh, the comments uh, from the CE document addressed here within October. And we're hopeful to proceed to a release for public involvement in November. With any luck, we'll be getting through the public involvement process of the environmental process, the NEPA investigation, in the month of November. And we hope to have uh, the CE document approved by mid-December of this year. Once we get through the environmental process, then we'll be able to release for uh, the land acquisition process, uh, which will commence with the appraising work uh, after we finish <coughs> proceed for that uh, land acquisition step process. As far as the plan development goes, uh, we have been working on the finalization of the redesign near State Road 3 uh, around the main source and the tractor supply buildings, and we've been working on that realignment design. Uh, we have been able to uh, finalize the right-of-way plan development to get the, the, with the new alignment around there, we've looked to finalize the right-of-way um, needs for the project so that we can commence the plat and legal description, the right of the engineering portion. Uh, those documents are going to be necessary uh, prior to the uh, completion of APA reports, the appraisal problem analysis reports, which is a necessary step before we get to 
the actual appraising process is part of the Land Act. Uh, the right-of-way engineering and the APAs are part of the PE services portion of the project development. Those are pre-land acquisition steps that are to be done. So that's part of the PE process, not part of the land acquisition process. But all those steps need to be complete at the same time that the environmental process is complete so that the plat and legal documents are ready to go at the same time the environmental has been complete. Now we have notice to proceed for land acquisition and we can move forward with the appraising and the buying services on that. The plan development itself, uh, we have uh, completed the geotech investigation. We have a report that was received in September and we have just completed and submitted to NDOT for review and approval the pavement design, the proposed pavement for the corridor. Uh, the submitted pavement design uh, that was requested for NDOT to review is uh, proposed to be a 10 inch asphalt pavement design. Um, so that's what we're hopeful and intending uh, for the design to be. Uh, that is under review, and that generally does have comments on that, and we'll look to address those comments if and when they come through. Um, it is still possible as a federal aid project that the project could come back and end up might request it to be an alternate bid design. That is either an asphalt or a concrete pavement design. And then in that case, the low bid, we would put claims forth for both options, a concrete design and an asphalt design and then the bidders, contractors, would have the opportunity to bid for one or the other. But as it stands right now, we should not be looking at an alternate bid design. We should be looking at an asphalt only paper design. With that, we are progressing towards stage two plans, again, fully incorporating the redesign of alignment around the main source facility. Uh, we're intending to have uh, both the stage two plans, which is roughly 60% complete design, and those are going to be the same plans that are going to be used to distribute to utilities that are involved in the project so that they can begin their relocation designs around the project. Our intent is to have the re relocation plans, uh, final plans for utility relocation distributed to those utilities on or about November 7th next month. The utility relocation plans the utility companies are given a 120 day period to develop their work plans, their relocation plans. So we would expect about four months hence to receive those work plans. Once we receive all the work plans from all the utilities, we'll then assemble those all, make sure everybody's playing in the same sandbox together and that there are no conflicts with our design or with each other. Um, also, we intend for the plats and legal descriptions, the right of engineering to be complete on or about November 15th. So that's in line with uh, time frame that we have for the environmental uh, document being completed 30 days hence. Um, those are basically the milestones that we've been working at and what we're looking forward to here in the next uh, 30 to 60 days. Do you have any questions regarding the design? Yeah, you have a redesign of the right of way between main schools, correct? Yes, sir. So off the redesign, the additional cost was about $73,000. We did submit an amendment for approximately $73,000. Okay. It does constitute three uh, different components. The first one is we are looking to do a sidewalk extension crossing State Route 3 and working our way down Lincoln Street to the first driveway on the west side of Lincoln Street. Um, as you might be aware, uh, there is sidewalk that is existing along Lincoln Street. However, that sidewalk terminates at that last drive. I believe it's a, a fast food franchise, uh, Taco Bell. Um, what we are looking to do with the multi-use path that is part of the Veterans Way corridor is we are looking to have a crossing of the signal intersection at three and then extend a sidewalk from east of State Road 3 south down Lincoln Street to connect into that first driveway so that there would be a continuous pedestrian access route from all the way from Veterans Way Phase 1 through and into Lincoln Street. So we are asking for additional survey and some additional design services uh, for that extension. That's the first component. The second component, and honestly the biggest component, is the uh, realignment design of the main source, uh, or the, the roadway around the main source and tractor supply areas. Um, as you might imagine, it's a fairly tight squeeze to get a roadway facility through those two uh, buildings. So there has been a lot of back and forth trying to get with the grade differentials between main source on the one side, kind of being on a high ground, and tractor supply being on a low ground, 
trying to split the baby there to, to manage and get the rotor through there. There's been a lot of trial and error to try to get that design done. When you change an alignment on the roadway, I mean, you're basically going back to square one. And so that's what we kind of had to do there. We've had to really look at everything and kind of cut all new cross sections and look at all kinds of great proposals and all that. So drainage design has been revised, right away design has been completely revised, all the documentation that was submitted at uh, stage one with 25% uh, complete design to verify level one compliance with all the MDOT criteria. We, we basically had to go to square one with all that. So uh, that is the bulk of the supplemental design is uh, towards that end of the realignment. Um, the third component is uh, together with the main source uh, alignment, but specific to the tractor supply side of the roadway. In order to get the uh, loading docks that are on the tractor supply building on that side of the tractor supply building next to the roadway, we have had to propose a modular block, reinforced modular block retaining wall along the multi-use path that's on that side of the roadway. Uh, the height of the wall will be about seven feet from the parking lot up to where the multi-use path is. Uh, there's also a, a foundation, obviously, for the modular blocks so about in total it's about a 10 foot height uh, or 10 foot tall but only about seven foot exposed retaining wall on that side uh, for a wall height of that size and that length it does extend for uh, the good majority of the parking lot adjacent to the tractor supply building we have had to engage uh, bridge design services within uh, American Structure Point for the design and plan development of a retaining wall uh, as part of that realignment with that retaining wall design uh, the tractor supply alleyway behind the building. Uh, we will be able to maintain one-way access for semis to go around the building, back up into the loading docks, and then pull forward to exit throughout. So it won't be a two-way uh, alleyway on that side of the roadway like it currently is, but it will still be able to function uh, even with the realigned roadway. So three different components as part of uh, that proposed amendment. Yeah. Everything you just outlined is a lot of work, and I understand that. But we're looking at a 15% increase over so the original proposals. Um, and that just seems high. Do you guys have any group of on that? Do you relook at it? We obviously do want to be good partners with the city. Um, if, if it's if we have to relook at it, we can relook at it. I will say, in fairness, that the realignment uh, portion of the roadway it is about half of the total length of the project site. The, the realignment, functionally, because of the curve that leads into uh, the commercial area of by 3 the realignment work started at Broadway. I mean, it is truly about half of the length of the project. And we have basically had to go back from about 50% complete to square one and start over again. So. Uh, the fee itself is in line with the original uh, design fee. Uh, it is proportional to that. It's actually about three quarters of the original design fee for half of half of the design. Um, but we do want to be good partners with the city, um, and we can work with Ron and with the mayor um, if you would like to, to try to reevaluate that to see if we can sharpen the pencil. I, I personally would, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean that, and I under, don't misunderstand that uh, There's a lot of work involved, and we understand that. But it's a 50% increase over what we had looked at that originally, and I understand why. Um, the, the design and, and, and development is paying about $55,000 to that $73,000. Sure. Uh, the $55,000 uh, fee just for the road design, uh, just your understanding. That is about $49,000 for the, the realignment and about an additional $6,000 for that sidewalk extension design. Okay. Of the $49,000 redesign fee, we have spent to date about $41,000. We're still looking at about another six or $7,000 in addition for the completion of that stage two design, the spot elevations, the mains of traffic uh, work out there. So that is how that fee was developed. But um, we, can, we can try to take a look at it and see if we can tighten it up a little bit. We want it to function, obviously. We want it to be safe, obviously. Um, but I, I personally appreciate it. Like that. Let me take it back to the office and see what I can do for that. I appreciate it. Any other questions? 
where are we in regards to the public hearing? Well, as you might be aware, we did have a public information meeting back in May. Um, <clears throat> the primary purpose of that public information meeting uh, was to hopefully preclude the need of an official public hearing. Mm -hmm. um, if that will work, if, if that, if that will allow, that will help us save about 30 days plus or minus um, on the overall scheduled development. However, what we're looking at is after the review of the draft CE document that was submitted here earlier this month, after the review, INDOT will allow that to be released for public involvement. That public involvement process, what we are intending, is to offer the opportunity for a public hearing. We're going to do a published notice in the newspaper. We're going to uh, send direct letters, mailings to each of the affected property owners adjacent to the project site, offering them the opportunity, if they desire, to have a public meeting, to either offer their comments. Depending on how many or any responses that are received to that offering, we have the option of either meeting kind of one-on-one. -on -one. We only get one or two notices of individuals that want to meet. It doesn't necessarily have to be an official public hearing where everybody comes down and we have a meeting. If there's only one or two, we could just meet individually with that specific property owner or owners. If there is a number of responses, if there's a collective where it's fairly obvious that there's interest in holding a public hearing, then from that opportunity, we would then just hold the standard public hearing. If that were to occur, we would hope that that would occur in the month of November. So you might want to take a look at your calendars and see uh, when there would be a, a decent time. Obviously, you're starting to get to the holidays, we kind of have to work around those, those schedules. But um, if a public hearing was to be held, that we're probably looking at mid to late November, maybe early December because of the Thanksgiving break. Um, but it would be in that time frame. But as it stands right now, what we're hopeful to do is to only offer the opportunity for hearing. And if nobody requests, or if very few people request, and we can meet individually, we might be able to bypass an official hearing <coughs> entirely. When will you know if that's necessary? We're hopeful to get INDOT comment back this month. As part of that comment, we're trying to stress with INDOT if they are going to mandate we need to hold a hearing, we want them to be upfront with that. We don't want to go through the whole opportunity. If they just want to go and sit straight say, let's have a hearing, then whenever we get those comments back, whenever we get released, then immediately we're going to put a notice out there. Um, I want to say we need a 14-day notice. It might be a 21-day notice period. Notification prior to that meeting to be held. So once we have that, uh, the meeting should be within a three or four week period. And then there is a 30-day comment period following that hearing for uh, as you might be aware, the hearing themselves, verbal comments at the hearing, or written comments following the hearing are given equal weight to that. So we do have to offer a time frame after the actual hearing itself to wait for comments to come in in a written form. Any other questions? <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank Thank you. Don't run off here. I just want to take the opportunity to touch on a couple of things that Patrick said. He talked about recommending uh, a bituminous pavement that would be consistent, and I believe the section that you have proposed in not is consistent with what was constructed in phase one. Um, and in not does require on some projects, and we're I think just right at or under the threshold, they do require an economic analysis of concrete versus bituminous pavement. Um, so we're a little bit at their mercy there. They could, and there's an economic adjustment on that. Concrete pavement, I guess in reality, and also in theory, has a longer life, and therefore it has, it's worth a little bit, it's worth paying a little bit more up front because over the life cycle, you try to equate those costs. Uh, Patrick mentioned the schedule at the moment. We have a requirement for December of 17, ready for contract, I think. Um, Right away, needs to be cleared by October. Yeah, October right. or we're we're not we're not behind schedule, but we're not ahead of schedule either. And so we need to be as efficient on our end as we can be to make sure we get Patrick and his people what they need in a timely fashion. So we want to continue to work to stay on that schedule. Um, this project is is federally funded at eighty percent. However, it is believed that. The um, extra work agreement, 
that you uh, the, the amended agreement it, it's believed that they will likely not participate in the 80 percent of that so that cost whatever that cost ends up being will be all on on the city yeah and with regards to cost um, this agreement is through the Board of Works because of the federal involvement in the on the new business basically with our Board of Works. So what you're considering is the funding and then the agreement will not come through you. I should point out, and I think Patrick did, the work, the amended amount of work has pretty much all been completed already. So, um, And then finally on the public hearing, um, Patrick has proposed, and we're going along, along with the idea that we offer the hearing opportunity as opposed to starting out intending to hold the hearing. We may be required by NDOT slash Federal Highway that we have to have a hearing, and as Patrick said, they do require that we want to just get right there as quick as we can and not invest the time in getting to the, offering the opportunity and then find out at the 11th hour that we have to hold it regardless. So, did I say anything wrong? Okay. okay. Um, as a part of, since it's not on the agenda elsewhere, as a part of the phase two update, um, we have Luke Karen here with us this evening from Structure Point. And I think Luke is prepared to give you some information about the marketing efforts. Actually, I'll take one, I guess. Okay. We'll market the whole thing while we're doing it. Sure. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Luke Karen, Mayor of Structure Point. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, I did speak with Sean Cofer. Uh, he, he remembered last time we spoke about the marketing efforts. Uh, he was the one that came to have the boards here for you. Um, so we have uh, talked, we, we're, as we talk with developers and the partners that we work with on other projects, we're continually marketing uh, this, this site as well. And I believe Mark is talking with Thompson Thrift um, as a developer who does a number of different um, developments um, so they're working on that we have uh, five four or five other developers that we have um, told about this site um, and as we continue to talk with more developers developers will continue to, continue to do the same um, there's a few industrial developers that would have an interest but it's our understanding that the city doesn't have necessarily an interest in the industrial side of development in that area um, but that is an option if you wanted to go that route um, Ultimately, and I think Sean had mentioned this before, is because we're not under contract and we don't, when it comes to marketing these sites for us, the kind of the extent of it for marketing on our side of it is talking to the, de to the developers who would be interested in this and, and introducing them to it and then introducing them to the parties that be um, to, to look at this land. Um, if you wanted to take that a step further, uh, we would really recommend getting someone on board to take a look at the demographics in the area and start to market this on a potentially regional and national level. That would involve a broker. So if the city was interested in going to that level, uh, we could suggest a number of brokers that we have worked with in the past. Um, but ultimately that's, and Sean felt pretty strongly that that's, if, um, if, if you want things to pick up, that kind of thing, that would probably be the route to go is to hire a broker. For that kind of work, and again, you can recommend um, a number of them that we work with. But that's essentially it. Um, we again, we'll continue to market the site the best we can with the developers that we work with day in and day out. Um, and Mark's in discussion with Thompson Thrift. Um, hopefully, there'll be more. Um, if you'd like to continue, we can offer up some brokers if you'd like to go that Questions? Appreciate your effort. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item two, report of project list, list committee. We've had myself and Adam on the committee, Ron May, city engineer, Dave Fry um, is on the committee, and Wendy Blake, the executive director of Main Street Greensburg. So we've had a couple meetings. We have a meeting coming up this coming Monday. Or we're going to get Brian Roberts involved, and we've got some potential projects. We're getting a project list put together, um, and that's about all. Yep. Really, to report at this point, hopefully in November we might 
I'm sure we won't have a final project list in another four weeks, but hopefully we'll be closer to that point. So we had some good discussions so far and more next week. Next item, approval of claims, phase two project claims. We have a claim from American Structure Point, $9,818.82. We have our financial report that we have over four hundred thousand dollars in the fund, so that should not create any hardship. Entertain a motion to pay I, that. I would make a motion to pay the structure. Thank you. Yeah. I'll second. I you can treat the bill too long. Pay that bill too. I'll pay that bill too. Pay that bill too. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed. Motion carries three to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Item four: request for funding for professional services in the amount of twenty-three thousand six hundred dollars for assistance with preparation of overlay district for Veterans Way Memorial Way. Mr. May, do you have something to? I do. Um, to give us? I'm pretty confident this body spoke of this topic before. Um, it's also been discussed at the plan commission, and the plan commission made a recommendation to city council favorable to um, getting some help with the overlay district idea. And in their meeting this month, the council approved the funding of the project, but they asked that it come back to you for your consideration as to whether or not you could and would fund uh, the project. The project will move ahead regardless. It's probably not a good way to sell what well, you should pay for it, but um, but they're asking because this is directly related to the development that you could find the funds to take care of this. And Chris and I have had a discussion about the appropriateness of that, and I will let him speak to that part. From a legal standpoint, it would be my opinion that I review the statutes and other legal uh, documents on it in cases, and it's an expense that's for a public improvement in that area, so I think it is qualified or covered by statute that, from a legal standpoint, you could pay it. It's not an operating expense or maintenance expense after the project's completed, so there's to pay it as an expense for the public improvement. I might also add that phase two is certainly on your project list and I think technically phase one is still on the list and we, we, we believe it's done but the list has not yet been revised so it's still there. It seems to me that uh, what we're talking about here relates to both of those projects very directly. Commission discussed whether they would want to do this themselves or utilize the steering committee and for I don't know if convenience is the right word but if the plan commission does it then every time that group gets together is a public meeting and requires advertising and we'll sort of process them. Um, they have a proposed steering committee that would consist of a board of zoning appeals member, a city council member, a plan commission member, myself, representative from EDC, they've asked that you all consider providing a member to that steering committee. Um, we have a public member and the school corporation uh, wants to have a member and then the uh, Board of Works we're asking for them to have representation on that steering committee. So a part of what I'm asking of you this evening, aside from the funding, is if you all would want care to designate one or more members to participate in the steering committee. 
and I'm willing to put Adam's neck of the news in that we and I have discussed this and he has expressed an interest in participating in that process and I would uh, be grateful for his participation. If more of you care to participate, we could take two. We don't want more than two, not that we only like two of the th five of you, but we don't want a quorum of your body either. So. We're on the, the uh, professional services is to help develop a marketing plan? Or no, it is to write an overlay ordinance, and an overlay ordinance is, is an ordinance that provides additional control of how development will occur, uh, that overlay district will first have a geographic boundary that can be done different ways. So the first thing that has to, needs to happen is to define what physical area would be affected by this. And then requirements would be written into this overlay ordinance for things like architectural treatment, maybe access control, maybe further constraints on signage, maybe further constraints on landscaping. Whatever the city determines to be in the best interest of everyone out there, um, I do not need to remind you that you've spent you know, five and a half million dollars so far, and um, that's a very sizable investment, and the Redevelopment Commission and the city as a whole, along with all the property owners, deserve the best possible return on that investment. And this is an effort to achieve a quality of development that will produce that best possible return. And I can, any of you that care, uh, I have a PowerPoint presentation from the consultant that I'd be happy to share with anybody that would care to see it, to kind of walk through this process. Ultimately, it'd be a zoning ordinance that bill in front of the city council through the planning commission and then the city council that it's comparable to the zoning ordinance, just specific, specific for this area. It would be an ordinance, as Chris says, and it would therefore be enforceable. And um, the challenge of this process will be to define the appropriate level of further uh, requirement on the development. We want enough to get a good quality product. We don't want so much that we scare everybody away from us. I would make a motion that we fund the professional services in the amount of twenty-three thousand six hundred dollars for the assistance with the preparation of the overlay district for veteran support. I will second. Not those in favor of the motion, say if I was saying aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed? Motion carries three to zero. And I don't think you necessarily need action on the steering committee. It is truly a steering committee. It has no real authority to do anything other than to offer some guidance. There will be public involvement through this process. So, um, of our Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 requirements. The City Council in their last meeting did approve our implementation plan by resolution. We are working now on organizing some training for 
uh, everyone with the city. Certainly anyone that represents the city that comes in contact with the public needs to have this training. One of the steps that we have already implemented, we have, among other things, a duty to gather data about the constituents that we all come in contact with as we serve the city. Laying on the back table next to the door is a, an anonymous questionnaire. It is designed to collect data anonymously about ethnicity, gender, age, household income, um, those kinds of things that are to be considered. So we, a part of our duty is to report the makeup of our community and the people that, that we do business with. So in each of our meetings going forward, I ask that the presider remind the public, invite them to participate in that. Um, it is intended to be anonymous, and I believe that we're going to have a, a box that we can insert those in once they're completed. There is no personal identification on this form. Um, the more data we have, the better it is. We will probably, once we get a year into this, take a rolling year as we go forward and keep track of the more recent participants. Um, and we do want all the involvement we can have, and I don't really know how to do this, but what we don't want is the same person filling out a form every time they come in and all of a sudden it skews our data set just tremendously. So, But I do ask that uh, the presider of each meeting make the public aware that those forms are there and ask for participation in completing those. Ron, do you want to put that form on the same website? Yeah, we will. Um, actually, we're going to publish the entire Title VI implementation plan. So we can do that. And I think also we will distribute those to um, the utility office, the clerk's office, the front desk, our office. Uh, we will put it out there for people to fill out. Um, we will have people that are very anxious to do that, and we'll have a number of people that will be very reluctant to do that. And so we just need to continue to try and solicit it as best we can. One of the things we have to do at the end of the year and each year is develop a, uh, uh, an accomplishment in Google's report. And one of the things that we are accomplishing this year is getting our plan in place and, and starting to gather this data and uh, start to do some training. So this is something that's going to be here forever. Uh, it's a federal requirement and, and a good one. It's good that we treat everyone as equitably as we can. All right, thank you. Our next meeting is in four weeks, so on November 2nd at 6.30. That's the week before Thanksgiving. So we'll put out joint elements of us all this. If there's nothing else, we'll adjourn our meeting. Thank you all.